This is Wang Wang and Funi. They're the only giant pandas in the southern hemisphere. But sadly, their species is slowly dying out. Pandas are classified as endangered and there are only about 1,600 left in the wild. So Wang Wang and Funi are part of an international breeding program to help the survival of the population. But it's not as easy as just pairing any two animals together. It's important that animals don't breed with another animal they're closely related to. If they do, the babies can be born with various illnesses which would threaten the future of the species. When you have that sort of going on, then you end up with all sorts of, you know, you can end up with other sort of mutations and, and problems. Um, you want to keep it diverse as possible. So to keep track of each animal's family history, their details are kept in a stud book and the computer works out which animals are good matches. This is the chimpanzee family at Monato Zoo in SA. The four females came from a zoo in the Netherlands while the boys came from all over. They were brought together to create a big range of genetic material and they've recently had a new addition, a brand new baby chimp. Zombie is the mum. Zombie was recommended to be the first one to breed because she had shown the most uh, positive signs in terms of being a mother and, and mothering sort of behaviours uh, at Burgers Zoo. John didn't have a lot to do with getting the chimps together. But there are certain things the keepers do need to keep an eye on. We basically can control who we want to breed by using contraception with the chimps. So we have an implant which goes into the arm of the female and that'll control her, her breeding. John and the other keepers are hoping the alpha male Sotsi is the father. Sotsi is, is actually the most genetically important chimp uh, in Australasian region. So I guess the reason for that is uh, he grew up at Adelaide Zoo with his mum and his, his two sisters. His dad, Peter, died when he was quite young. Uh, and so really there's been no breeding done with his genetic line for, you know, 22 years or so. Another animal species that's monitored in a stud book is the southern white rhino. They're managed as one big population, housed at different zoos, and someone looks after the genetics of all the rhino in captivity. So they manage their genetics based on the long-term survival of the species in captivity so that we don't have to import any more uh, from overseas. It makes it easier for breeding. Almost two years ago, Umkwali arrived at Monato. She gave birth to Digger in April last year. Umkwali was brought here because she was a good breeding match to male Satara. He's our main breeding bull and he's wild caught, so his genetics are really important. He came from Kruger National Park and so that's why we breed with him most of the time. Uhura is pregnant at the moment. Rhinos are pregnant for 16 months and it's almost time for Uhura to give birth. But the keepers really don't do all that much. We leave them to their own devices pretty much. These girls are fantastic. Uh, all three that we've had born here have been born overnight. So we've come in in the morning and there's been a healthy little baby boy running around with mum. <laughs> and they're up and running, you know, before we get here in the morning. After the calf is born, it's back to the stud book for further instructions. We get recommendations every year for breeding. So we get told who they want us to breed them with. And if next year we get told to breed again, then we'll breed again. Breeding animals in captivity isn't as easy as you might think and there's lots of organising and transferring between zoos to get the pairings just right. But if it's going to help the survival of some critically endangered species, then the tricky stuff is more than worth it.